All right, we are back with one of my favorite series to do on YouTube, which is what is the highest paying jobs? Exploring what is the highest paying jobs in tech, with coding, without coding, really breaking it down. Now you might be like, Tiff, this seems like a bad time to talk about the highest paying jobs in tech. Have you seen what's going on in tech? Yes. Thank you, I have, I, I don't live under a rock. No, but in all seriousness, I wanna be very mindful of the current environment when it comes to the tech industry and really keeping in mind that the purpose of this video in particular is because we love exploring what jobs are out there, what to work towards. So yes, they are some of the highest paying, but more importantly, they have really incredible skills that are very in demand that we can be working towards today. So really keep that in mind as we are going through. This isn't to say that you need one of these jobs to be the highest paying or that any other jobs aren't good enough. That's far from the case. And I hope our community already knows that, but you know, I needed to do that, check off that fine print that the internet needs nowadays. All right, Whew. I think I got that covered. Now with that, let's get into it. Okay, Steve? Right, Steve? Like, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, that was a bad joke. Let's get into it. All right, before we dive into the highest paying jobs in tech in 2024, I want to share with you about something I've recently been loving. Up on screen here, you can see Link2. So this is really cool. Link2 is a great way that you can start investing in leading startups with affordable minimums for broadening investing opportunities for anyone. Now, I think this is so cool. Oftentimes when we think about investing, we think we need to have large amounts of money to be able to do so. So if you are someone who's more interested in the investment world or wants to at least dip your toes in it, this is for you. Okay, so here's how it works. So they at link to assess the risk and make the investment. Then they deliver the opportunity to you. So they are kind of doing all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Link to takes out the complicated aspects for you by conducting thorough in-house research. And they essentially will take a step back and evaluate each company. They are the ones who will invest first into this company to see how it goes. From there, the process is really streamlined, making it literally as easy as you can go in, point and click to participate within the investment opportunity presented on their platform. Now, what I love about Link2 is they give you the opportunity to invest with a lot of early startups. And I think this is really cool. Not only early startups, but I like that part too, because oftentimes I'll, and I know this is all for you techies as well. You see different startups that are really booming quickly and you're like, if only there was a way I could be part of investing with that, Link2 has you covered. I link them down below. So make sure to go sign up today. All right, I wanna start off with a job that honestly I wasn't too familiar with, hence why we do this series, which is data security analyst. Now I've heard of different roles similar to it, but I never really educated myself as to what does this role entail and why is it so highly paid? So let's start off with, before we get to the salary number, let's start off with what does it entail? So at its core, data security analysts ensure that different computer systems and networks are protected from hackers and viruses. Sounds pretty important. Part of this job ensures that when you are working for a certain company, you are ensuring that they are up to date with all their systems, their software, their antivirus, and ensuring their antivirus software is all running effectively. You can think of them as the person who goes around and evaluates the current security systems that are in place. Are they strong enough? Where are their vulnerabilities for these hackers and viruses to find their way in? Now, let's get to the fun part. You know the fun part, which is money. Is money the fun part? I don't know, sometimes the stressful part, but let's talk about what do these data security analysts make? All right, I tried to get all my resources from the same place. There are some that I wasn't able to find in Glassdoor, but for the most part, I'm going to be referencing Glassdoor just so we can stay consistent. Now, this one I did not find in Glassdoor, so I went to a website called CRN, and they really dive into what exactly uh, different salaries are, and for a data security analyst, the median is 200,000, so this is, this is a high paying job. How do I get one of those? The good thing is there are so many different courses you can take online. There's one actually on Cybrary. I love that name, Cybrary, which is the best way to learn cyber security skills online. So this you can actually start with today for free. I'll link it down below. This is a really great course. I also found that IBM is doing one. I'm just trying to see right now if it's free. I think actually it is, which I'll link down below too. So those are two great courses if you are looking to upskill or get into the cybersecurity world, which definitely is not going anywhere, are great to take. All right, next on the list is a role or a job that I honestly, when I, for such a long time, and if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you probably already know this about me, 
I wanted to become this role for a long time. And I ended up going in a different direction, which I'm very thankful for. Not to say they want to do that role, but just because you, know, you gotta be open to opportunities, which is DevOps engineer. I think DevOps is so cool and so underrated as far as a really cool role to be doing. Now, why do I say cool? Mainly because if you are someone who wears, who likes to wear multiple hats, it's a great role for you. Because you're kind of in this area where you're bridging different teams. So you're bridging between software development teams, operations teams, but then you're also working on automating different workflows and ensuring efficient software delivery. So I mean, working between different teams, automating parts of the workflow, ensuring efficient delivery, like those are things I love to do. And I know we do a lot of like, automate this, automate my life with me, different kind of videos like that on uh, this channel, which yes, is totally different, but the automation part is really fun. So what exactly does it take to become a DevOps engineer? Well, I have up here Red Hat's website and here's how they explain what does a DevOps engineer do. So DevOps is all about the unification and automation of processes. Okay, we already talked about that a little bit. So within an agile environment, developers, system admins, and programmers can be siloed. So working on the same product, but not necessarily sharing the same information across different channels. So then that is where DevOps engineers come in. They are that middle person, if you will, who's able to really work between different teams, uh, communicate well, but also is very technical. It's such a cool role. All right, well, let's get to the fun part. What do DevOps engineers make? All right, according to talent.com, I'm having trouble with Glassdoor. I thought I had all the links for it and now it's being weird to me. Glassdoor is a finicky one because they always want more information from you before you can get information from them, which might be really smart. But according to talent.com that I have pulled up here, a DevOps engineer in the United States, keep in mind, the median annual salary is 130,000. So entry level positions start around 110, where more experienced workers can make up to 170 US. So this is a really great paying job and that salary can continue to increase and then also too we are talking about adding in bonuses uh, different kind of initiatives or incentives I should say that you can gain on a yearly basis all right what's the next one this is one that when I make these videos and I often don't include it I get in trouble for people are always like tiff this is still very in demand why are we not including this so I got you we are covering it this time which is blockchain engineer and I know for some of us we might be like blockchain really I feel like that was a few years ago, but the reality is blockchain is a technology that is here to stay and it's used in so many different industries. It's not going anywhere. It just gets such a bad rap because of the whole crypto world and the ebbs and flows with that. But the technology, the underlying technology with blockchain is so useful in so many different areas. I mean, when you think of, for example, healthcare and using blockchain to ensure that each record for patients is unique and tied to them and it can't be tampered with, that's huge. That impact can be game changing for the healthcare industry. And there are so many other examples with this. So blockchain engineers, even when I go on LinkedIn or any job posting site, those are probably the most common jobs I still see. People are hiring for people who are experts within blockchain. On talent.com, they say the median annual salary for United States for blockchain developer is 146,000 US. With the lower side, if you are more just starting out, being around 125,000 and working its way up to 185,000. These roles honestly are really in demand and I feel like because of the hype cycle, if you will, with blockchain or crypto, I should say, they aren't as, people aren't learning about blockchain at, at the rate they used to. And so what's happening is these jobs are sitting vacant and companies are having to pay you a very high salary if you are an expert within blockchain. Now, the next role I wanna talk about is one that is less technical. I know we've been going through a lot more technical roles, but as a side kind of bar, side note, the reality is all of these roles are within different sectors within the tech industry. So for example, the first one we spoke about being data security analyst, that is in security. Then we just finished speaking about blockchain, that is in the blockchain world. So even if you aren't looking to get into a technical role, in these little sectors or big sectors, there are so many different opportunities too. So if you're watching this and you are saying, Tip, all you do right now is talk about technical roles. Where's the non-technical roles? They're within those sectors as well and very high paying too. Now, okay, now that I've done the second spiel of the day, let's get into what is this non-technical role, which is product manager. And listen, I know when I was a developer, I used to, I'll be honest with you, not love product managers. I thought, what do they actually do? But now I really, as I've you know, become more experienced working in tech, grown in the industry, I can see how vital a good product manager is. And I say good just because like any role, there are some that maybe slack off and don't work 
as hard, but when you get a good product manager, it will completely change your team's work ethic. It will completely change uh, looking ahead at the roadmap. I mean, it honestly, when you go from having a good product manager to a bad one, you really realize how important product managers are. Now, a lot of times developers or technical folks will end up going into a product manager role if you are looking to get more into that management role. And I think product manager is actually a really cool job. You are that person who bridges the customer needs with the company needs. So if you are someone who likes speaking about tech, likes understanding the technology, but you also like interacting and communicating with customers, this is a good role for you. Now, what does this pay? Well, on salary.com, the median salary is 122,000. By the way, median is so hard to say. I don't know if it's just me, but median, not medium, median. I always have to like open my mouth when I say it very wide. Thanks for listening to that. There's a lot of sidebars today. All right, but yes, 122,000. And it can go up though greatly, you know, um, up to 150,000 and start just below 100,000. Now this is in US as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to grow a really great career within product management. Coming in at number one, and I feel like it's been in the number one to number three spot, lots of these times when we've done this list is cloud architect and this role and roles within cloud we could talk about cloud engineers cloud architects are continuing to grow in demand and we haven't seen this sector slow down at all the good thing about understanding or really knowing about the cloud is there are so many certifications you can get really specialized with even online from the comfort of your home without having to go necessarily back to school for this role which i think is I mean, so amazing. Look at all the different courses that Amazon offers or AWS offers. The opportunities to learn and get certified within the cloud are feel like they're endless. So that's a really big bonus to this role. So what exactly does a cloud solutions architect do? They have a really interesting role as though they kind of bridge that line between being very technical, but also customer focused. So as a solutions architect, your job is not only being able to really understand and build technology, but the other skill you really need to have is being able to communicate that with your customers, understanding as to how they will best understand what's going on, break down what is working, what needs improvements, all in a way that, you know, as you're talking to customers, is very positive and optimistic. Well, hopefully anyways. So what is the average salary for a cloud solutions architect? Well, in the United States, it's around 157,000. So it's a very well-paying job. Now on the high end, we are talking over 200,000. And then on the low end, we are talking starting salaries around 130. Now this is in the United States. And this is average, uh, just for the record, based on over 3,000 different salaries. So this is a pretty accurate salary. All right, we have gone through some of the best, highest paying, the top highest paying salaries in tech in 2024. As I started this video with, it's important to note that aside from being high paying roles, there are so many opportunities within these different sectors that this video, yes, we talk a little bit about the salaries of these jobs because it's exciting. But the bigger picture here is skills we can learn within these sectors and apply them to our own roles and see ourselves grow as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I linked link to down below. So if you are interested in the world of investing, startups, all of that good stuff, I mean, with keeping up to date with tech, it kind of comes hand in hand. We see what's going on. We hear the latest before most people do. So it's a really interesting space to be in. I linked them down below, so make sure to go check them out today. All right, I think I'm gonna go get coffee. Yeah, I don't need more coffee, but I'm gonna go get more coffee. See you soon, everyone, bye.